All right, this is paper five. Um, some of you may be taking this paper as an alternative to coursework. And so I hope this video helps you to be a little bit more familiar with what to expect. Go, so question number one. Consider the data below on the distance an object travels in certain time periods. So clearly we're gonna plot a distance time graph. Okay. Time is going to be on our x-axis, and distance is going to be on our y. Y is the vertical, and x is the horizontal. So let's just make this a little smaller. Okay. Make sure you label your axes. You put your quantity name and your unit in bracket. Okay, then we're going to section off our axes, so we're going to write in our intervals. We need to look at the data, the range of data that we're given. So for time, we need to plot from 0 to 5. And for distance, we need to plot from 0 to 75. Don't make a mistake and think that the only values that you're plotting on this graph are what you see in the table, okay? Everything in between should be able to be plotted on your graph. So, I'm going to take intervals of 2 centimeters each on the x and And just to make this quicker, I'm going to count the tens here. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and I can go all the way up to 80. Okay, so this is how your axes should be labeled. Of course, you're going to draw a line along the edge like that. You draw it with a ruler. Make sure that it's straight right along the edge of the axis. Put a little arrow at the end usually. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is plot our points. Okay, so it goes x comma y. This is the x values. These are the y values. So the first point that we're going to plot is 0, 0. So that's this point right here. Then we're going to plot the next point. I'm just going to zoom out so we can see our values. 0, 0, then 1 and 15, that's here. 2 and 31, so that's 30, and then 1 up, that would be right there. 3 and 43. Up there, 4 and 60, five and 75 is our last point. Okay, now at this point, you're going to want to take a ruler and you're going to draw what we call a best fit line. It's a line that's going to go through the center of your points, it may not go through each and every point, but it will more or less be drawn in such a way that the points are evenly distributed on both sides, okay? So I'm gonna attempt to draw a trend line here. Of course, you're doing it on paper. It will be much more accurate. Okay, but the main point is that you're going to get a, a linear graph. You're going to get a straight line graph. All right, then the next thing you're asked to do. Okay. So this was our first question. Plot a graph. Second question, we're asked, what is the value of the slope on the graph and to include our units? So to calculate the slope, you might know this formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 
Okay. Now here is um, a mistake that students make a lot. Some students will take this formula and they will just pick any two values from here. So let's say this one, this one, that one, that one. And they plug it into this formula and they get an answer. Now here's the danger with that. If those points don't actually fall on the line that you drew, then that is not the slope of your graph, okay? Let's just look and see where those points actually are on my incorrect, <laughs> inaccurate line, but you, you get the point. So it so happens that those points, so the first one that was two and 31, that's that point there, which is not on my line, and 60 and four, also not on my line. So if I were to use those values, then I would get an incorrect value for my slope. When you draw your best fit line, it can happen that none of your points fall through, fall on the line. Some of your points may fall, maybe one or two, okay? What's important when you are calculating the slope, you need to pick two points that are actually on your line, okay? So, for example, I can take this point, okay? And let's call that point one. Put that in a different color. So if I take this point, no, that's not in the table, doesn't matter, okay? It's on the line that we're trying to find the slope of. And then I'm gonna take another point. Um, Notice I'm looking for points where they cross those major divisions. So I don't have to do too much work into figuring out what those coordinates are. Okay. So you might want to look for two points like that, but make sure that it's they're far enough apart. You don't want to pick two points like those two that are really close to each other. It won't give you a very accurate value. Okay. So I've chosen my two points that are on the line. And I'm going to get the coordinates for those. So this is point one. So it's going to give me the value for x1 and y1. So x1 2.5, that's x1. And y1, that goes straight over, that's 35. Okay, now I'm just doing this just to show you the procedure. The values that I get may be very off from the actual value, but I will give you the answer um, that you should get near to to plot this graph, okay? All right, so 35 and 2.5, that's the coordinates for that one. For this one, my x value is 4.5, so that's x2. And y2 is uh, about 65. Okay. It's halfway between. All right. So just for the sake of it, I'm going to work out what the slope would be in this case. Okay. Um, y2 minus y1. So that's 65 minus 35 over x2 minus x1, 4.5 minus 2.5, okay? And if we take those values and compute that, we're gonna get Thirty divided by two. It's actually <laughs> exact. Um, as my estimated graph is correct. That's the value that you should get. Okay, um, it's not going to be meters. It's going to be centimeters. All right. So the slope of that graph, you should get fifteen centimeters per second. Okay. So I'm going to write that there. Now I'll put a plus and minus just to say if you get 14 or 16, 
they're about or some uh, fraction of that 14.5, 14.8, 15.1, .1, you're um, in the ballpark, so that's fine, okay? Now this working that I showed here, this needs to be here, okay? That needs to be on that line. Notice there's two points, so we expect you to show how you solved for that, okay? So that's the second part. Part three asks, what physical quantity does the slope represent? Okay, so if you think about the formula that relates distance and time, it's this one. The slope is always the subject of the formula in an equation like this. So the slope represents, the slope of a distance time graph, you recall, gives us the speed. Okay, and it's important that you say speed and not velocity because this is a distance, not displacement time graph. Remember, distance is the scalar quantity. So we can get the value of speed, which is also a scalar, not velocity. Okay, moving on, part D, what is the distance traveled at 2.5 seconds? Okay, you read that from your graph. So at 2.5 seconds, you will get, according to my graph, I have about 35, so plus or minus, should be closer to 37, so I'll say 35 to 38 meters, give you a range. So if you got somewhere in between there, then that's good. Part E, what is the reading beyond the range of the data collected called? Okay, so put a star next to this one. This might be a new word for some of you. And it's a technique in data analysis that's called extrapolation. And it basically means extending the graph beyond where we have data and assuming that the trend continues. Okay, so let's say. I decided to extend this graph a little and I wanted to know what was the distance traveled at six centimeters. I don't actually have that data, but I can extrapolate it. Okay, I can extend my graph, extend the line, and then I can find out that the distance traveled is somewhere about 80 meters, 80 centimeters. Okay, that's extrapolation. So think extra or extend. All right, that's number one. Number two, it's just a measurement problem. Measure the length of the side of an iron bar using the section of the meter ruler and record the correct re reading. Okay, so you're literally gonna read from the end of the ruler, so that's one. And then you're gonna come down, so this is in centimeters, so that goes 12, 12.1, 12.2, okay? So 12.2 centimeters is our reading there. Easy peasy. Moving right along. Part B, now we have a thermometer to read. Now remember the thing about thermometers is that the readings we read from bottom to top. Okay, so let's zoom in really, really, really close. You can zoom in on your paper. All right, and we want to read from this point right here, right where that curved section stops. And that brings us to that value right there. Okay, I can see that this is 40. So we're counting in five, so the next interval must be 35, where I see this next line, and where the liquid stops, it's right before that, so. You can clearly see this stops at 34 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's our answer there. Just remember to read from the bottom up. Okay, so far so good.
Let's look at the next paper, I mean the next question in another video.